This church, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because this world, there are a lot of uncertainties. But the certainty that the servant has is that Jesus will return. Our assurance is eternity. The world, that we don't know what's going to happen when we leave this church. But there is, uh, we have an assurance that we're going to live forever with our Lord. That's what moves us. I greet the church and the ones who are visiting us and watching us with the peace of the Lord Jesus. I would like to invite those who can, to, in reverence to the word, to stand up. And the book of Matthew. Matthew 20. Matthew 20. We're going to read on, only two verses. Matthew 20. From verse 6. Matthew 20, verse 6. And thus says the word of, the, of God. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing idle and said to them, why have you been standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard, and whatever is right, you will receive. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, may your word come towards each heart, Lord, that you may operate also what you have already scared in your eternity. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. My brethren, this text is a part of a parable where it speaks of different moments of the day. It mentions a couple of hours, different hours. But it is something that is very common in this parable, independently of what time it is. It is an invitation. Go and work on a vineyard. And this parable has two aspects that we need to, we should look at. The first one speaks of, of a church. All the way from the time when Jesus revealed himself to the disciples uh, on the first hour, on the early dawn. A church has no name, but it is a people that has been set apart to live in eternity. And we see there the third hour the pouring out of the Holy Spirit, the sixth hour, which was a moment of darkness, the ninth hour, that speaks about the revival of Martin Luther and all of that. But there is also an aspect which is individual of the servant, of the one that one day received his call. Because we are here today and we have the ones who have been called on the early dawn, which means what? Uh, they were young, they were maybe even be born in the presence of the Lord. The ones who came young and the ones who came as adults, the ones also who have accepted the Lord uh, at an age that was more an advanced age. But independently on the aspect of each one fits in, there is always something that is common, which is the invitation. And tonight, the Lord had already shown through spiritual gifts that tonight was going to be a night in which the Lord is making an invitation to the ones who are here tonight. And the word says that in the 11th hour, without getting too much details, the Jews, they measured their day in 12 hours. The third hour would be 9 o'clock in the morning here. And so the, their 11th hour would be close to the uh, 5 o'clock on the afternoon because on the 6th hour would be the end of that day. And here there's a man that had made an invitation, was actually trying to make an invitation throughout the day. He would pass by and he would say, hey, look, come and, and work in my vineyard because there's, because there's still room. And at this specific hour, 
that we read here, there were people that were idle. So in other words, they, they helped, there was no purpose for their lives. They were there on the streets, on the squares, public squares, without doing anything. This man, the head of the household, comes to them and says uh, what we just read. He says, what are you doing here all day? The day is almost over. And they said, nobody hired us. Nobody called us. And my brethren, God the Father, this head of the household represents God. He has made an invitation. And throughout man's, this whole man's trajectory, the invitation is being made. Come and work. Come serve a living God. Come to serve a God that does not leave you alone. But many have heard this invitation and they continue to be idle. And as I said, the idol has no purpose for their lives. They are there, time passes, life passes by, and the person is there, idle, static, standing still, their life literally standing still. And they answer, oh, but nobody hired us. The world listened to, uh, to me. The world is not going to give any reward to anyone because in the world, man is a slave. What they have in this world is death. But if you want to receive something for our life, you want to receive something where your life will be transformed, not only for this day, but even more in eternity, accept the invitation of God the Father. The speech of gifts today said, tonight is a night of salvation. Tonight is a night where God wants to speak to man. He wants to speak to you and to me. And the invitation is being made. I'm not the one who's making the invitation. It's not my the church is making the invitation. The invitation we're receiving at this moment is from God. And the one who died for you was his son. The one who pays the price on the cross was Jesus, the son of God. And maybe for you to say, oh, but I was never hired. Nobody called me. The world gave no worth to you. For the world, we have no value. I was having a conversation with a youth this week, and he had asked me a couple of things, and he had made me a question. And why do I suffer so much in the world? That was his question. I was already on the phone with him for more than half an hour, and he asked me this question. Why do I suffer so much in the world? And then I told him, you want the, an answer that is politically correct, or you want me to be sincere with you? Then I, he said, yes, you can be honest. And he, I answered, because the enemy of our souls, what he has for you is death. But death brings to the life of man. And then he began to answer uh, sadness, anguish, the loss. And then I said, yes. Now, in the opposite to this, you have an invitation. I told him this way, you have an invitation. And he asked, asked what invitation is this? And I said, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. And he turned to me and said, but what, I, what do I have to do? Then I said, come to Jesus. That's the answer. If your life makes no sense, if nobody gave you, uh, nobody hired you, come to Jesus. The song that we sang, come to Jesus without delay. And the Bible says, if you hear his voice today, it's not tomorrow. The invitation for, from God is today. God wants to change our lives today. God wants to give eternity today. You came here without a purpose. Oh, because nobody gave me a reward. Nobody called me. I don't know what to do. Well, you came to the right place. What God has for you is something that has already been established. And he says, go work in my vineyard and you will receive what is, uh, what is fair. What was fair was the death of Jesus. You are not going to receive anything that is not from the eternity of God. Jesus, 
came from eternity, he dies and goes back to eternity. The price he paid was not in vain. The death of Jesus did not was not left on the cross. And that's the price that's being paid for you and for me every day of our lives. Every day. If you came here today, this price this price was paid. And tomorrow we'll be here to again in the name of Jesus. And the price that you, you the reward that we received was already paid on the cross. Because it's uh, a price that was paid was an eternal price. And the word of God says, Come into the vineyard. Come to work. Go because there is room, there is a space for you. If you want, the Lord is ready to help you out. He says that He knocks at the door of, our, your, of your heart. But then there is a conditional here. If someone hears my voice and open their door, my brethren, the call is made by God. And, but you will choose whether you accept this call or not. If your life is idle, accept the call. Accept it. Because the word in Revelation says, if somebody hears my voice and open the door, I will enter, I will have supper with him and he with me. So what Jesus wants to do is celebrate because a supper is a feast. Supper is not simply an act, but it's a moment of celebration because what Jesus wants to do, what Jesus wants to bring into our lives is joy. A supper is a moment of joy. So if you came here tonight, know that it was not in vain. What God has for you is a blessing of salvation. We are going to sing this song and you will be paying attention to the the lyrics and you're going to speak with the Lord because the Lord what the Lord has is salvation tonight
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, the Lord has shown through a couple of spiritual gifts. First, the Lord was speaking on a revelation where a man who entered here tonight, he thinks that his salvation is based on good works in being a good person and do the right thing. However, and this, he always practiced this because he always thought that that was the way. But when he heard that none of this has any worth and it doesn't have for the eternity, it is worthless. We do this because it is a matter of being good citizens, good people. Good people. But the eternity, and for the eternity, none of this has any worth. And when he, this man heard this, he would understand that he needs to acquire salvation, a true salvation. And he will surrender to the Lord tonight. And the Lord also has shown through another revelation that a man that is not sure of this revelation put Romans, Romans 10, Romans 10, he is not sure of salvation and has doubts regarding his life in the presence of God. And the Bible says that, the gift says that at the end of the service, an angel would come to this man and he would ask him if he understood what salvation was. And he would say that finally he understands what salvation is. And the angel will open the Bible to this man in Romans 10, verse 8, 9, and 10, that says the following. But what do I say? The word is near you in your mouth and your heart. That is the word of faith with which we preach, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with your mouth confess is made unto salvation. My brethren, the text that we read in Matthew speaks about the eleventh hour, the end of the day. We are actually at the end of the day. Prophetically, spiritually, we are at the end of a day. When midnight strikes, Jesus will come, but there is still time. It's not midnight yet. So for you who came here tonight, for you who, whose spiritual gift spoke to, there is still time. Place your life before the Lord and say, Lord, today, that's the salvation. Salvation is what I want. I want, want you. I want God. I want Jesus. That's all. In order for you to inherit and inherit eternal life, that's all. And the Lord also spoke through another spiritual gift that there was another house, a beautiful house, from the outside. But there was no light inside of the house. And it seems like as though the house was empty, but there was a family inside. His family had difficulty even to walk inside of the house because of the darkness. They had to touch the walls in order not to fall, and they would crawl, uh, crawl on the house. If there is no light, without Jesus, man's, man cannot walk. Without Jesus, man hits his head all around, goes back and forth, tries here, tries there. It's not, it doesn't work, and he does it in a different way, and continue to be idle without leaving. But the revelation is being presented to us tonight because Jesus is present. Jesus is the light of the world. The Word says this. But if So if G Jesus is the light, there is no darkness. Where there is light, the darkness go away. The light comes to the door, the, dar the darkness leaves. But the step we need to take, the call has been made by God. We came to this point. But now, the choosing whether we are going to accept this call or not. It is between 
me and between you and God. And may tonight God fulfill what He has revealed tonight. If there is someone that needs a salvation, in the name of Jesus, He will operate and He has already operated. So now we're going to have a word of glorification for this blessing the Lord has given of another opportunity to accept salvation. Lord, we praise your name. Lord, we praise you because tonight, Lord, you brought salvation to your house. We praise you, Father, for this word of comfort, for this spiritual renewal tonight. We praise you, Father, because we can feel your presence, because you have a Holy Spirit, because your Holy Spirit is in this place, because the angels of the Lord. Because of renewal, because your grace has been enough for us, because sustenance of the Lord, because in the middle of the trial and tribulations, you have preserved us, you have sustained us. We praise you, Lord, because we can say, Ebenezer, because to this day you have helped us, you have sustained us, you have preserved us before your author. Lord, we are on the time called soon. We praise you because you have embraced us tonight. Blessed be your name for everything, Lord, in the name of Jesus. The church may stand up. We're going to finish the service. Lord, we thank you for yet this opportunity in your, your presence. Lord, accept all our adoration and glorification and gratitude of your people and what you ought to do tonight is that you may fulfill in your word what your what is your will upon the life of each one accept the service take us home in peace continue blessing us pray to you already thank you in the name of jesus the church may be seated just reminding everyone what is the the promotion promotion is on the 19th right just reminding everyone that we are on the month that was set apart for the children timid and adolescents and we're going to begin now the week of early dawn on behalf of the children, we're going to have their event. So first, it's going to be the baptisms on the 18th. So in uh, two Saturdays from now, we're going to have a baptism and uh, uh, supper of the Lord. And that's the wedding to be praying and getting prepared. And then we're going to have the classes where the children have completed their age. They're going to be promoted to the next class on the, the 26th, 25th and 26th. They're going to have the seminar for the children, the children seminar. Saturday is going to be the, the adolescents, and the Sunday morning is going to be the children seminar. So I ask the brethren to be prepared, so that there may be invitation, and the Lord may speak through the invitation, and that there are many children, believe it or not, that need a blessing. So as they may be praying and reminding that tomorrow we're going to have Sunday school. 10.30 in the morning and later on at night the service of qualification of the Lord. If anybody needs an assistance, a prayer, we are here ready to give you assistance. And I wish you all the peace of the Lord.